Well, let's talk more about the melting ice and the staggering implications. Joining us from Florida is John Englander. He's an oceanographer and climate change expert. John, warming temperatures melt the planet's glaciers and ice sheets. Explain to those of us who are not climate experts why this is such a profound problem and such a big deal. Sure, thanks, Natalia. Um, sea level rise is perhaps the most clear and profound impact of melting ice. Antarctica and Greenland hold enough frozen water in the form of ice on land to raise global sea level 65 meters if it were all to melt. Even 5% of that would be catastrophic. Most of it's in Antarctica, about 85% and 15% in Greenland. So we really need to keep our eyes on the melt rates of the glaciers and ice sheets in those two places that will change shorelines for 140 nations that border the ocean. You know, I was re reading a study about how grave the situation is in, uh, in Greenland. And according to this report, three and a half trillion tons of Greenland's ice melted from 2011 to 2020, and that will be enough to flood all of New York City. That's just staggering. It is. I mean, I, when you take a certain amount of ice and talk about it compared to one city, I think it's a lot, little bit misleading, actually. But if you think about that, the global coastline, which defines land from water and what's underwater, has been fairly stable for 6,000 years, all of human civilization. But we know in geologic history that sea level moves up and down 120 meters. It was 120 meters lower 20,000 years ago, and 100,000 years ago, it was seven meters higher. We need to wake up to the reality that sea level has changed in the past. It's been stable for 6,000 years, and now it's rising again because of warming temperatures. John, talk about the impact on fish, seabird, polar bear. I know you can't see the video, but we were just showing some video of polar bear. What does it mean for, the, you know, for wildlife, for animals, and their habitats? It's tremendous. I mean, certainly we, we look at the threatened polar bear in the Arctic and what it's going to do to penguin colonies in Antarctica, um, whales. I mean, the, the whole ecosystem, as you suggested, from fisheries to um, uh, the temperatures, of course, and amount of rainfall and heat waves and drought, all of this ties into the, to the global temperatures and the currents. And as the ice sheets melt, they're changing the ocean currents. We look at the uh, main current in the Atlantic. We call it the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Current. Most people would think of it as the Gulf Stream that takes warm water from the Gulf of Mexico up to Northern Europe and, uh, and Greenland. But that's already changing. It's, it's slowing down about 15% so far. These changes are ominous. And my takeaway is we need to slow the warming. We need to start adapting um, to, the, to the conditions we're seeing now, the kind of strange storms, more wildfires, more droughts, more heat waves, more rainfall. And then we need to begin preparing for some of the changes that are now inevitable. We're going to have at least a meter of sea level rise in the next century and could be much more. So, John, can we turn this around? Is that, is that even possible? We can no longer stop it quickly. We can slow it, and we must try. If we don't, it's going to be a disaster. But um, eventually, you know, like in 100 years, we might get it back to where we'd like it to be, where, where we remember it as being the, the stable climate. But uh, we've got to do those three things. It, we can't go back quickly to, to where we were 50 years ago. We put too much heat in the ocean. But we've got to try and slow the warming. It's a desperate situation now. It's not just for the wildlife, it's for us. This is going to affect agriculture, water supplies, and uh, fatalities. Oh, all right. We'll have to leave it there on that sobering note. John Englander, thank you very much.